man, that fog is thick. Pea soup out here today. I'm uh, not too far from Potawatomi State Park at the home of a friend. And uh, the John G. Munson is coming in this morning. Got here, I don't know, early wee hours of the morning and has been sitting out at Idlewild Point near Penny Park and is on its way in. But it's so foggy, I don't know that we're gonna be able to get any shot. We'll try. Also, the Walter J. McCarthy sitting out there at anchor. She was anchored there overnight. I was out here for a couple of hours last night waiting for her to come in. She never did come in. She uh, dropped anchor just outside the bay. All right, well, I better get set up here. This is a nice place to shoot from. My friend here, Grant, has uh, allowed me to use his backyard, which looks out onto the bay, a spectacular view out onto the bay. But uh, yeah, I have a nice concrete pad here to set up on and uh, outdoor table, set my gear on, makes it easy. It's kind of misty raining right now. It was raining uh, a lot last night and uh, fog came in overnight. John G. Munson is a Laker design built in the early 50s. One of the silver stackers that were built during that time period. And uh, I just love the design. You know, we talked about in an earlier video about how the Wilfred Sykes kind of was the precursor to this design. It was built in, I think, 1950. And uh, then in the early 50s, these Laker designs came on, similar to the Wilfred Sykes. Just love the lines of these boats. Gorgeous lines. I don't know if we're going to get anything here. If not, go to the other side of the bay. See if we can get something over by Bay Ship. But very, very foggy. It's 39 degrees out, and it's the 17th of January. This is crazy, crazy weather. Wet and fogged up now. rain. I just wish the rain would stop. Well, it ain't all peaches and skittles out here. I didn't mind the rain so much as the waiting, and I was beginning to wonder how well my camera gear would hold up to these conditions. That and I had serious reservations about coming away with anything remotely usable for a video. Tug William C. Gaynor going out to meet the uh, John G. Munson. I can hear the Munson breaking ice now. Can't see it, it's still about a half mile down the bay, but yeah, I took a couple photos <laughs> of the gainer here. I'll put one up to have you look at it. I mean, it's in the center of the channel and you can barely see it. That's how much fog there is. The fog keeps kind of rising and falling here. Once in a while, I can see all the way across the bay ship. A minute later, you can't see anything. Well, we'll wait it out. I'm having issues with my Canon M50 camera right now. The uh, monitor screen doesn't want to turn on. And uh, I think it might have something to do with either the cold and the, it's raining now, so it might have something to do with moisture or it could be operator error. I'll find out when I get home. So all I have is my little Osmo action camera here to uh, to shoot with, and uh, yeah, probably not gonna get much. I set my expectations low. The thick fog made for soft images, and a lack of contrast played havoc with the light metering in the autofocus. The scattered light eliminated nearly all the shadow detail, 
and about the best I could hope for were some profile images with subtle reflections on the clear ice. With limited choices and virtually no background to work with, I wondered what other compositions I might come up with to help tell the story of the John G. Munson's inauspicious entry into the bay. And I decided to include some shoreline foreground as the Munson paused briefly before entering Bay Ship for a winter layup. From here, I think the stillness of the clear water and melting ice sheets would help to capture the mood of the day, but the Munson looks vague, like a memory of someone you used to know. Then, I remembered what Oregon nature photographer Susan Dimock told me when we were out photographing waterfall one time. She said, to make the scene as intimate as possible, shoot as close to the surface of the water as you can. Turns out that works for boats, too. I think the gainer tug went out to uh, assist with the uh, McCarthy. That's a thousand footer. That'll be coming in next. Probably end up waiting for it here until she comes through since we're here. But uh, I got to thinking, I wanted to thank you folks, uh, for those of you who watched uh, particularly the video on um, the Edwin Gott when they brought her in. I received more views of that video than any other I've ever made. In the first 10 days, I got about 15,000 views and over 100 comments. And uh, it was... <laughs> it was surprising to me, uh, you know, a little bit embarrassing too. I, you know, I, I just make these little videos because I love the boats and I'm uh, pretty, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, yeah, I get excited about them. I've been following them since I was three years old. So I remember my first boat experience in Waukegan, Illinois at the cement depot there when a boat, might have been the Alpina, I'm not sure, came in. I was fishing with my father and my two older brothers from the pier there, the um, breakwater in Waukegan, and I had no interest in fishing. But I sure was interested in what they were unloading from that boat and the boat itself. So, yeah, I'm passionate about this. I love making these videos, and I'm glad that so many people uh, enjoy them and I've gotten responses from all over the world from uh, well, all over the Midwest people throughout the US who never even knew these things ex existed um, and then Canada um, Ireland Scotland uh, England Australia Finland um, it's it's really been wonderful to see so I'm glad you enjoy them and I do thank you for them and if I haven't responded to your comments yet it's you know I've been a little busy and crazy here trying to get uh, ready for these boats coming in so here comes the there the gainer breaking up ice the McCarthy is actually coming backwards. It's backing in. The reason they do that is because there's no place for them to turn around here to back into one of these slips at Bay Ship. So they have to actually use a turning basin out off of Idle Wild Point to bring it back. And sometimes they get towed in uh, with a tow assist, but she's backing in on her own and it takes a very long time. McCarthy used to be called the Bell Isle. What a beautiful name for Bell Isle. And then I think it was 1990 they changed the name to the Walter McCarthy Jr. named after some steel executive, of course.
clog with whiffs by now. No such luck. Here she comes. With no background for scale, I again tried to put the McCarthy into perspective with a little bit of foreground. Some atmosphere to diminish background distractions can be very effective for highlighting your subject, but when your subject is a thousand feet long and seven stories tall, a blanket of fog does you no favors. I just enjoyed being in the moment, listening to the crack and groan of the ice under pressure caused by the tremendous displacement of water from her hull as she passes. Not every excursion's a winner, but I wouldn't have missed this for the world. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until the next boat arrives, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you down the road.